this is such a huge topic. It comes up so much and that is, am I too old to be a DJ? So this video, yeah, sure, I'm gonna get real at the start, but I am gonna go into some practical tips, how to get club shows and how to actually get more opportunities as an older DJ. And even at the end, I'm gonna op like offer you some opportunities as an older DJ. So stick around right to the end. But before I go to all that, the practical tips and opportunities, can I just speak openly for one sec? And that is too old, too young, it's possibly in your head, okay? And I feel when going out, people are way more concerned with how they're being perceived as opposed to, you know, perceiving you, okay? And that's the problem, okay? All these people go out, everyone's caught up in their head. And that's the beauty of DJing, okay? It's your job to transform people, take them out of their head, right? And, you know, you gotta start, you know, bringing, using music to connect like-minded people and not make it about all old, young, division, you know what I mean? It's about uniting, connecting people through really, really, really cool events, okay? And if you're busting out amazing sets, Honestly, you're gonna get asked back regardless of your age. So personally, I'm 44 now, okay? Would that stop you from working with me, okay? And you think if I play, I could add value to an event? So rest assured, right? When I do play, I go all out and believe, no, actually better yet, right? I reckon I know that I can deliver, right? And that has nothing to do with age, but it probably has a fair bit to do with confidence. So a better title would be, are you confident enough to be a DJ? And even if the answer is no, let's take that a step further. Are you confident in your ideas? Now don't worry, okay, I'm about to go into practical ways to actually get shows as an older DJ in one minute, but just quickly. I'm a true believer that our ideas and our inspirations are our compass and we need to start trusting them. So if you think of DJing and you get excited about it or you even have this idea that you want to be a DJ and it sparked something in you and you have to follow through with that. But what usually happens is people have these habitual thoughts like they, they creep back in with these thoughts and doubts and stuff like that and they're not trusting their original idea so my advice is don't second guess yourself trust your ideas and even if you don't feel confident enough to play live yet you just need to be confident in your initial idea and then what will get, give you happiness is making progress towards your goal okay and sure when you play your first show you're probably not going to feel very confident i don't think any DJ who has ever played their first show has ever felt confident, okay? But by throwing yourself into what you may feel is an uncomfortable situation, at least at first, okay? You'll get over it, you'll grow, okay? But it is the only way to grow, okay? And I feel by putting yourself in an uncomfortable situation, it pushes your comfort zones and it overcomes challenges. And that's gonna help you build confidence big time. And then that confidence, it spills over into every area of your life. You honestly, it's transforming, it's amazing. But by the way, that's not exclusive to DJing, that's everything, okay? It's like making progress towards your ideas. So you have to go with that, like what you feel drawn to and trust that initial feeling that came to you. And when you think about the things that excite you, just remember, if you can conceive the idea in the first place and you're taking steps towards achieving those ideas, Honestly, right, you're on the right path and you have to trust that process. Don't allow this too old, too whatever, too whatever. Just get rid of all that. Now, I would love to dive deeper into the spiritual side of success and how to change your mindset from seeing is believing and being a slave to what happens to believing is seeing and how to change the way you look at everything forever and allowing your goals to come through you as an expression of who you are. But honestly, I'm not sure you're here for that. So I'm gonna jump into practical ways for older DJs to get shows now. But if that side of things, what I was just talking about does interest you, please comment below and let me know so I can make a video about it in the next few weeks. Cause I, you know, I enjoy doing that stuff. I enjoy sharing that kind of knowledge and my experience. But um, anyway, let's jump in. So firstly, a practical approach to getting work as an older DJ. So please stick around though to the end as I have some huge shout outs and announcements to make that could actually really impact and affect you. So okay, 100%, I get it. You've had this idea to DJ, you're passionate, you're really excited about it, but then you start to second guess yourself and you wonder, am I too old? So in my opinion, you're never too old. And if you're passionate and excited about something, then you have to do it. 
However, now that you know that you want it, let's look at your best chances of actually getting shows and becoming successful as an older DJ. So first off, there are many different ways you can DJ. So for instance, let's say you have a cool network of friends, like even my part, like my partner, right? Like her mum's always throwing parties and stuff. It's really kind of cool. And so what you could do is you could just whip out the decks at one of your own house parties or even your friend's house parties and get a taste of what it feels like to perform. And in my opinion, this is actually a great starting point for any DJ of any age. But when playing house parties or even private events, I do suggest getting a few party lights as you want to do your best to create a cool vibe as atmosphere. It's honestly a must when playing. And let's say you're banging out this killer set in a room. And let's say that room's just like pretty standard, right? Pretty blank, right? And there's no atmosphere in it. People may walk straight past and like, you know, they may feel a little bit awkward, like, you know. But if your DJ area has lights, it has a cool vibe, perhaps even a little fog machine, it creates a cool tone which can act like a magnet and before you know it you could be playing to rooms full of you know happy jumping people echoing encore at the end of the night and just raving about how how cool that party was you know you used you created atmosphere to connect people it's really cool and i've also known i just want to say one thing quickly i've known and taught a ton of people that learn to DJ with the goal of throwing a party, e.g., you know, it could be their own wedding or their 50th or even a New Year's Eve event or a Halloween party with the plan to secretly learn how to DJ and then shock everyone by jumping behind the decks and playing a world-class set that wows people, okay, keeps people talking. And the funny thing is, if you play one killer set and the vibe is electric in the room, it gets people talking. And from that one party, you could be booked every single time your friends or their friends or their friends, you know, throw a party and there's no better feeling than being surrounded by friends and taking the atmosphere at parties to new levels. So I remember when you know, I was running clubs, okay, one of my latest clubs, the tagline we used to promote it was, we were creating a festival vibe in a club. And for you, it may be bringing a club vibe to your house party, okay? <laughs> anyway, just imagery, getting your thinking. So, okay, the second style of DJing is to create your own opportunities. Now, this could mean you play corporate events, weddings, or perhaps you even approach your local bar and cafe to get some work. Now, in my experience, playing private functions has no age cap whatsoever. And I've seen wedding DJs over 60 busting out really good sets, actually, to pack dance floors. And no one caring in the slightest, as at private functions, bars, cafes, you know, whatever, it's less about who's DJing, and it's more about the atmosphere in the room and the tracks that are being played. However, I guess when creating your own opportunities though, there are a few things that, you know, you probably have to consider. So firstly, it's probably most likely gonna involve you taking in your own equipment. Now that means speakers, DJ gear, some lighting, okay? Now, if you want a video on what gear you need for this from like budget to more expensive setups, let me know in the comments as I'd love to do a video on that. I've actually got a fair bit of experience playing live, okay? I, I, I've done like, you know, plenty. Like I was doing clubs mainly, but on the side, I, I, you know, I filled in for people. I've been part of those kind of things. So I've just been around DJing my whole life. And I've done plenty of functions, bars, and private parties in my life. And in many ways, I honestly feel every DJ should do this at least once, as there's nothing like doing longer DJ sets and learning how to control the music for the whole night, as opposed to being on a lineup, and how to take, take people on a journey. And in my course, I even share how to prepare music for longer sets, how to read a crowd assuring that your set delivers, and how to create a lasting impact assuring repeat shows. So I'll link that in below. I see, I know it's helped like a lot of people. But anyway, moving forwards, right? Another thing to consider when doing private functions, bars and parties is, it is like it's gonna involve staying up to date with music trends, okay? And that could mean compromising your personal style of music. So for instance, if you're being booked for a wedding and that person who wants like, you know, is booking you wants pop music, you're gonna to have to play pop music. And even though I have played tracks in the past that are beyond cheesy, okay, and they would, they would make me cringe, I'm not gonna share it, it's embarrassing, okay? 
I must admit DJing for me was always about atmosphere and there is no better feeling than filling a room and having people scream for more and at the end of the night rooms echoing encore, encore and no one wanting to leave and everyone coming up and thanking you. Like it's, it's a lot of fun. And personally, I've always found myself having so much fun regardless of what genre I'm playing. And again, in my course, I do have a ton of content on all of this and having how to play all genres and open format parties with step by step. So honestly, I'll link that in below, but I can, you know, I can teach anyone to DJ anything. Anyway, anyway. However, I guess the big advantage though for older DJs doing private functions is, you know, one good show and you can get a ton of repeat work through word of mouth. And even though it may cost like a few thousand dollars to get your rig up to date, you know, meaning DJ gear, speakers, lights and all that, you can be earning anywhere from $300 to $2,000 per event. And for the older DJs out there not wanting to be out all night, like in the club scene partying to dawn, the good news is most functions and private parties end by midnight. So it's a great way to get some experience playing live, get experience doing longer sets, earn some extra money on the side. And because you're being booked to play for their crowd, there's no pressure on you to bring people. Okay, now this is it, the club scene. So, for those of you wishing to hit the club scene, I get it, okay? It can seem daunting, especially when you turn up and most clubs are full of teenagers and people in their 20s and maybe you feel out of place, okay? But DJs are different to the crowd and in ways, DJs have even got their own section, their VIP section, the DJ booth, okay? And if I was like, I personally, I was busting out sets to pack clubs till I was almost 40 and in truth, the only reason I moved away from DJing and became a teacher was I've been clubbing since I was 18 and running clubs since I was 22. And after 17 years of running weekly parties, often three events per week down the east coast of Australia, like flying around, it was, it was a really good life. I like, it was so amazing. But I guess I felt like something new. Well, actually, no, you want me to tell you? So it wasn't even that. More so, someone saw me at one of my clubs and they tracked me down and they begged me to teach them how to DJ and I thought, you know, what would be involved in teaching someone? I put together a program for them, but to see the reaction in that person and how quickly I could get results in them, it blew my mind and I had this immediate idea, okay, a vision that I could, you know, help and inspire the younger generation. And from there, I got the idea of my first like teaching project, Sydney DJ School, which went on to be massive. And later from that club ready DJ School, and honestly, I've never turned back. And I guess in life, I've learned to trust my ideas and my passions and I use what I get excited about as my compass. And that's why I always say, if you have the idea in the first place to DJ and you feel passionate about it, that's all you need. Okay, sure you'll get some obstacles and all that, but that's what makes it challenging. Okay, but all that aside, there are a ton of DJs still killing it in their 50s. But I guess that's where you jump in and say, yeah, but they might've started young. They've been DJing for 20 years. So let's say you're 40, 40 now and you want to start now, but you actually wonder, is being a successful DJ like even achievable for you? Then I still say 100% yes. I don't think age matters nearly as much as you think, but one reality is, okay, when playing in clubs, especially to you get your foot in the door, venues may not book you despite your age if they don't know who you are. So. I have done a ton of videos on getting shows and even creating your own opportunities as a DJ in my course, okay? But just quickly, even when I was running events every single week for 17 years, I've received thousands of messages from DJs wanting shows at my events. And the majority of those requests get ignored as honestly, people tend to work with people they know or at least with people that they're supporting their events or people that may have a name. Now, I covered that in more detail in last week's video, so I'll link that in now, but understand that that advice in last week's video isn't just for young people, it's for everyone, okay? But age aside, until you build a name for yourself, uh, and to even get a name for yourself in the first place, it may involve going clubbing, like at least a little bit, okay? So fancy that, okay? You wanna be a club DJ and I'm actually asking you to go clubbing, okay? But here's the thing. If you don't wanna ever go clubbing, it can make it more difficult to get club shows. As let's face it, if you're not willing to support the events that you wanna be part of, 
How can you expect them to want to give you a chance and even support you? You're, they, you they don't know you, You're like there's nothing to them. Now in Sydney, I've taught so, so, so many DJs in their 30s, 40s and 50s how to DJ. And most of these DJs are succeeding big time. Like so, well, it's, it's really impressive actually. But in saying that, quite often the ones that are succeeding the biggest, they, they kind of do go out and support each other quite regularly actually. And at, I'm not saying you have to go clubbing every single week, but by going at least occasionally, you know, it might give you ideas. You might find like promoters, other DJs, you know, events that you feel kind of like you resonate with, you know, and by supporting them, it might even give you ideas as well. And it might, you know, inspire you even further. But here's the thing, right? The venues and the promoters that survived COVID, honestly, they're probably gonna need a little bit of help in the rebuild. So you need to change your mindset from what can I get from the promoters and venues to what can you do to help them? And by helping them, you are part of the rebirth of the club culture and community. And in my opinion, there's gonna be a ton of opportunities for new DJs post COVID. So I did a video on that some time ago, I'll link it in now, but that was actually, I think that was pretty insightful. But anyway, also by supporting the events and the promoters and even DJs that you wanna play with, not only do you become familiar with the scene, which then helps provide an endless source of ideas and inspiration for you, but you also see what music works. And if you club occasionally, you could very easily find yourself scoring occasional shows, regardless of your age, trust me, it doesn't matter at all. But then people jump in and say, but you know, I'm older now, my friends aren't willing to come out to clubs anymore. Okay, I've got no support whatsoever. Then my advice would be make more friends in the clubs that you frequent. There's no doubt having some support, just a little bit at first, okay, it is gonna help the energy in the room. And let's say you turn up, it's quite empty, but you've got five people there to support you. That in turn can act like a magnet and the dance floor can fill quite quickly, which then impresses the promoter. And if you're creating cool atmospheres when you play, okay, and you're adding value to the event, I trust me, you're gonna get asked back regardless of your age. Like honestly, age, I'm seeing older people in clubs more often than you think. Sure, everyone that goes to clubs might be younger, but some of the DJs are older. Like that, that's not a problem. So initially my plan was to go more into mindset now and how to overcome the limiting thinking that may be sabotaging you from like succeeding. But this video has already gone kind of long. So if you want a video on that, let me know and I'll schedule it in the upcoming weeks. So announcement time. This weekend is our next Club Ready DJ School student live stream with DJs from all over the world playing all weekend. So even if you watch a little bit or have it in the background while you do the things you love, I'm certain you're gonna be impressed, okay? The, the last one was amazing, but we've made improvements. They're getting better and better. And honestly, like last time I had it on, like you could have it on as a backdrop for your weekend or even put it in the forefront, you know, and use it as an excuse to throw a house party or a barbecue, get some friends over and just turn it up loud. Like it's, it's a lot of fun. And also just quickly, I wanna do a quick shout out to the organizers. So you have Chris Taylor, Bradders, Billy Simpson, JB, all the DJs involved and even to all my students preparing for upcoming streams. Club Ready DJ School has taken off in such a big way and our community and the ops that are coming from being part of that community are second to none. I've honestly, I've seen nothing like it. Like it's, it warms my heart. So anyway, I'm gonna link in the event stream and the full lineup below. It's 100% worth checking out. Is there's even a web page. Thanks for the guy who built that. That was incredible. And sure, we're renovating, we're putting it into our website. It's really, really cool. But the link below has got the lineup, DJ times, what country everyone's from. And if you click on each DJ's name, it displays more information about each DJ. So check out the link below as your, see it as your festival map for the weekend. And if you hear a DJ that you resonate with, I encourage you to reach out to them, you know, congratulate them. And perhaps you could even do a collaboration with them in the future. That's the power of the Club Ready Tribe. It opens doors, it connects like-minded people, but in truth, it's just taking off, man. You guys have seen nothing yet. We're just getting started. <laughs> okay, I'll see you in the chat this weekend. I'll be there. So yeah, support each other. It's really, really fun. Anyway, thanks guys.